We've got to make about nine or ten threes if we got a chance to win tonight. Tip controlled by Kentucky. That's Devin Askew who has struggled with turnovers. They got Brandon Boston who's coming off his best game, batting the starting lineup. And Olivier Saar misses his first shot. Boston the rebound in the paint. Nice pass down low, and Saar lays that up and in. Yeah, a really good look by Boston. I mean, just over the last two or three weeks, that's the play that Boston would have tried to flip one up or shoot one off balance. Good, good find, good pass. Javante Smart, Thomas is the great shooter. Wilkinson, and there's Trent Watford, who they're going to play through a lot. He's a really good passing big man, but he lays one off the window. And Darius Day is the fifth starter. Ravi, when you play LSU, you and I both know an elbow touch by Watford sets him up for a hard right-hand drive, and LSU gets it on the very first possession. Keon Brooks double-teamed, and he got fouled. Looks like that foul is going to be on Wilkinson. There's Will Wade, who, of course, is the head man at LSU in his fourth year there. Generally puts together a team that can score a lot of points. They do have difficulty defending. He said against Alabama, it wouldn't matter what we did. They were making everything. We just didn't score enough points, is how he put it. You haven't seen this guy. He is terrific as a shooter. A little slump recently, but his first three games in the SEC, he averaged about 30. Follows his own block shot and lays it in. That's that's Cameron Thomas's effort. Yeah, Rabbi, he's more than a scorer. He's really good, kind of like Moses Moody from Arkansas. He's really good at getting his own miss around that rim. Olivier Sard to the left, no good. Taps it up and in. One thing you'll notice as you watch Kentucky tonight and Saar and Jackson when he's in, they're just taller than anybody that plays for LSU. Yeah, the, uh, the, the strength of Kentucky in this game should be winning that restricted area part of the floor on both ends. We'll see if it develops. Watford the kick, three from Smart. That's off the iron and a good defensive rebound, which is one of those keys to the game by Brandon Boston. You see Sar down low, and they're trying to go to him again. That time he had that ball mocked away on a quick hand from Cameron Thomas. Second turnover by Olivia Sar in this game. We haven't even played three minutes yet. Thomas for a shot way too strong. And Kentucky the run out. Brooks got fouled and he nearly laid it up and in. So he goes to the line. That's a foul on Thomas. LSU's two losses this season, Florida and the game against Alabama, which Alabama basically ended that game before it started, before the folks from LSU had tuned in to watch it. It was over. John Petty was on fire from three-point land, and Alabama with its defense intact, and they do that as well as anyone in conference, and their offense clicking. Will Wade said that's a Final Four quality team in Alabama. No, I agree 100%. They, they, they are built so much like Bruce Pearl's Auburn team from a couple of years ago on that Final Four run. They can mismatch you at about three different spots. They can all knock down threes. That is a hungry, fast, swaggerful basketball team from Tuscaloosa. Lane was open, perhaps some steps, but he got away with it. Saar had it, lost it, and it's Smart who comes up with it. Watford into the paint. That's no good. Brooks had it. He lost it, but it's Devin Askew who comes away. Davion Mintz three. That's good. Good start for Kentucky. Yeah, he's got to start knocking down shots. Mintz, SEC play only 28%. He's a much better shooter than that percentage on a Kentucky team that is star for three-point shooters. He has to knock down open ones. Watford. They're going to get Saar on the floor. Olivier Saar, the transfer, Jimmy from Wake. You know, there's certainly been inconsistency when you watch him play, and given his size, tonight they seem to be focusing the seven-footer in the paint, but he's seemingly more comfortable from 18, 20 feet away. No, you're exactly right. He, he's a face-up specialist as a seven-footer is what he is. An open jump shooter, 
Cal trying to get him to drive the ball more from the 15-foot mark and down, much like Brooks and Jackson when he comes in. Sar is going to check out. And I think the problem in this game is early for Sar is not only the turnovers offensively, he's allowing the elbow touch of Trenton Watford way too easily. Yeah. He goes to the bench, four points. The shot blocking specialist, Isaiah Jackson, 23, into the game. Watford used that left arm to clear some space. Jackson had it. It's Brooks, and here comes Kentucky. Askew, Boston. That's in. Maybe Brandon Boston will carry the momentum from his last game in which he made as many field goals as he had all season. Ended up with 18 points. Good, confident start for the Cats at home. They lead it 12-4. On to Kentucky, Lexington, Kentucky, and the Wildcats off to a 12-4 start over LSU. This is our Saturday showcase with Jimmy Dykes. This is Carl Ravitch. So we just saw Duke lose. They fall to 3-3 three three in conference, exactly where Kentucky is. Did a halftime report with Seth Greenberg earlier today, Jimmy Dykes. He said about Kansas, they don't have any pros. Is the same thing ailing Kentucky and perhaps Duke right now? Well, they don't have any ready pros. Jalen Johnson for Duke is probably a ready pro, but Kansas doesn't have him yet. Kentucky, in my opinion, doesn't have it yet. Maybe Isaiah Jackson, just because you can throw him on the floor and say, D turn your motor on and go make something happen in a game. But no, it's, uh, that's, it, it's an unusual time for those programs that you just talked about, Ravi. Yeah. And how do you fix your roster? That ultimately falls on the shoulders of the head coach. And that's what Cal's gonna have to be dealing with in this next off season. At the bottom line, he needs more competitive dudes, tougher guys, guys are bringing nastiness with him on the floor every time out. Cameron Thomas on the floor, number 24. For those just joining us, really good shooter. He thought about a three, then he threw it up. Is he gonna get the three shots? I say it, Jackson banged into him. Just recapping where we're at. Kentucky fast start from the floor. They are four of six. Isaiah Sars got four points on two of four shooting. Thomas is one of three from the floor. Kentucky off a terrible loss to Georgia and LSU gave up a hundred plus to Alabama the other night. Take a look at his numbers, 22 points, which ranks first in the SEC. A freshman out of Chesapeake, Virginia. His first three games in the SEC, 32 points, 28 points, 26 points. And as he misses his first two free throws, he has been, Will Wade wouldn't say slumping, but he's not nearly as consistent or on as he was when we started the season. No, and, but he's getting a lot of defensive looks thrown at him. They're, they're doubling the ball out of his hand some. They're being very physical with 24 in purple. The SEC is as he worked off the pin down action. But still, he's one of those type of guys, drive. I think he figures it out as the game goes on. I expect him to continue to put up good numbers in this league. LSU will press a lot, which they did there, but Kentucky was able to get through it. Boston's one for one. He's two for two. Brandon Boston coming off his best game in which he scored 18 points. is now two for two. He spent a lot of time in the gym. He left at like Jimmy Dykes hours, like 2.30 a.m. this past week because he was busy shooting. Well, he's a, he's a pin down 15 foot jump shooter right now as his strength. And the key for Boston is you had one good game on the road, now come back and do it again. And so far, so good the first five minutes of this one. Here's that press again against Askew, who picked up his dribble. Calipari said today, when they press, especially full court, that means the floor is open. We've got to take advantage of it. Avion Mintz knocks down a three. And Kentucky, six of eight from the floor to start. That's how you take advantage of that 2-2-1 two, two, press that LSU throws on you. You're going to have some open looks on the back end of it from three-point shooters. You just have to make them. There's Trendon Watford doing a nice job. He's a good assist guy, and that was an easy handoff to Darius Days. There's the press again. It's broken. Brooks Mintz trying to knock another three down. That one's off. And Watford and LSU come back the other way. It's an interesting decision by Will Wade to press Kentucky in this game. Kentucky, not a great three-point shooting team. So when you press, you allow them to get some open looks, maybe get some confidence going early. Boston thought he was feeling it. He made his first two, but he missed that one. So Kentucky, a couple of empty trips. Watford, the drive held up there by Brooks, and it's a rebound for Kentucky. 
Kentucky being very physical with Trenton Watford to start this ball game. Calipari also said when Mintz is on the floor with Askew, he wants him to play the role of point guard. Good pass to Brooks for the flush. Just like that, frees up Askew, and Mintz is experienced. I, and, and I think Mintz plays off of two feet as a passer better than Askew right now. We have to remember Askew should still be in high school. Askew should have a path of being a three or four year guy. And I'm, I agree with Cal. I, I like Mintz with the ball in his hands, making plays, and he's a shot threat as that point guard spot. But Days missed a cutting easy layup and back the other way. Foul on Kentucky. That'll send Mintz to the line. Bradley, when you spread your defense out over 75 feet, it's you're gonna just you're one pass away, especially a reversal pass to the far side of the floor of giving up a three. And Davion Mintz makes him pay. Here's what I'm talking about. Get a paint touch, play off of two feet, a nice step through to find an angle to Brooks down low. And Kentucky offensively, first five or six minutes, playing about as well as they have so far in SEC play. Now LSU picks up its third foul. Mintz to the free throw line. First one, no good. One of the things Kentucky struggled against in their last game, they missed a ton of free throws. They bring Dante Allen, the sharpshooter, off the bench. Askew and Brooks will go to the floor. Kentucky only two turnovers to start this game, Ravi. Think about this. They are number 290 in the nation in terms of offensive turnover rate. No Calipari team has ever finished lower than like number 184. That's their biggest issue is turning the dadgum ball over. So far tonight, not a bad job of it. When you say dadgum, what, what are you inferring? Well, it's just, it's, it, it's irritating. And it's irritating to Coach Cow. When you're giving the team the ball one out of every four trips, that's a, that's a dadgum problem. Gotcha. Another miss. So we're not seeing the red hot Cameron Thomas to start this game. Where is it of the game for Kentucky? And that's a foul from behind on Boston. Fourth foul on LSU. Let me tell you, as a coach, Ravi, if you think your guys are ready to play or not, it shows up on the boards. And Kentucky right now with a 10 to 4 rebound advantage. That's one of the first signs you look at in that first media timeout to, to get a feel for your guys. Were we ready or were we not? The ball's on the boards. Pretty good indication. Jackson into the paint, pushes off, and they're going to get an offensive foul against Kentucky. I think you have to live with his mistakes, Jackson. And, and I say that because put him on the floor, turn him loose, let him do what he does. What he does is he's 6'11". He's the fastest guy that Kentucky has in the three-quarter court sprint. He makes unbelievable, uncommon defensive plays. He's a hard driver, and he's a threat on the offensive glass. Josh LeBlanc, 11 on the floor as the baseline. Boy, he left his feet, found days, and he can't make that an air ball. And they got numbers. Boston, that's deflected out of bounds. It'll stay Kentucky basketball. Here comes Eric Gaines into the game for LSU. Rabbi, you mentioned that Alabama beat down. They put on LSU in, in that ball game, 16 of 35 Alabama's threes came off of a non-paint touch possession. So think about that. It's just not dialed in LSU was defensively when you're giving up non-paint touch threes. Dante Allen knocks down a three. And Kentucky continues its hot shooting, eight of 12 and four of six from three-point land. 23 to nine. LSU's gonna be having Alabama flashbacks. Gains baseline by Allen, and he hits it after he hung in the air. It seems like, and I know it is, when Allen checks in, most teams will try to get him isolated and try to beat him on a baseline drive, and LSU went right to it. Allen left wide open. That's risky business as Ware fights for it. Mm -hmm. Saar picks it up. And Kentucky's being the tougher team right now. He'll shoot it again. Dante Allen buries another one, 26-11, Wildcats. That's why you put him on the floor. I, I know his foot speed is still a little bit not what you want in terms of guarding the ball. But the Kentucky offense is completely different with the threat of his jump shot. It's offensive. Sure looked like it. Josh LeBlanc threw aside Brandon Boston. What a start for Kentucky.
9 of 14, 5 of 8 from 3. They got to be encouraged for sure. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by 5 Hour Energy Shots. Get it done. Dad Comet, get it done. Like so, Alabama was 28 of 23 of 43 from 3. And tonight, Kentucky against LSU's 5 of 8. Well, at some point, that's on LSU, and I think it starts right now. You've got to get in the airspace of shooters, and you look at those long closeouts that LSU is trying to close on guys like Dante Allen. That absolutely will not work. If you're not in the shot of our camera when Kentucky catches that ball, especially Mintz and Allen, then that's on LSU. I do appreciate Kentucky's moving that ball hot tonight, getting side to side. Multiple guys are touching it within the possession. But LSU's going to tighten up on that end. They're going to get ran out of this game. Offensive rebound, that's put back up and in by Sharif O'Neal. Familiar name at LSU, O'Neal. Kentucky needs to stay aggressive during the lag time, Ravi, between when the press is coming off and when they're getting into their half-court defense. That lag time is when they've lost shooters, and Kentucky needs to stay aggressive the first six or seven seconds of that shot clock. They got to believe for Calipari and the Wildcats, the start that they're getting tonight is exactly what the doctor ordered off of a Georgia loss at the buzzer. And for LSU, it is exactly what you wouldn't want, given you were just shell-shocked by the three-point shooting of Alabama. And those are those words from, from Will Wade that they were shocked, they were embarrassed, felt like they came back on Thursday and had a bounce-back practice. Kentucky moves the ball. Askew hasn't been a very good shooter, and he missed that three. And LSU's going to continue to swarm and double team that ball and, and, and commit two or sometimes three to the ball. Kentucky just keeps moving it. They'll get good looks. Watford, good layup. So they've got Watford on the floor. Sharif O'Neal, Shaquille O'Neal's son. They continue with that 2-2-1 two, two, pressure. Has it paid off, and it won't here. alley you pass, and it's Toppin who throws it down. I just don't think you can press. I don't, I don't think LSU's press is good enough, is what I should say, to stay with it. Yeah, they, they get exposed on the back end of the press, and they're not getting any turnovers on the front over, Ravi. Javante Smart, his three misses. Not a good start for LSU. They are 0 for 4 from deep. He's left open. He missed that shot, but Jimmy, you're right. The defense is closing out, but they're closing out late. Yeah, way too late. Hands low, not the urgency that you have to have when you're on the road. You just got your tails beat in your home floor. And it's, it's what I'm talking about. You extend your defense 75, 80 feet. Kentucky doing a good job because they have big guards with size that can make plays over the top of a small LSU team. Kentucky right now, they're sending the message that you, you press us, keep on doing it. We'll score 100 in this game. That's the mentality that you have to have anytime you get pressed. If we all see it, and the people at home are probably seeing it, how come the LSU bench hasn't made a change? Well, it's been who they've been defensively, and at times their, their press has won games for them. The teams have not handled it well, and they've been very cautious against that LSU defensive press. And, and, and cautious is not the right answer. Kentucky's not being cautious. They're, they're being fearless without being reckless against it, and that's why they're up 28-17. Gaines knocks down two. Nine minutes to go. And the press continues. Attacking right now. This is that lag time I'm talking about. Like, keep attacking right there for that three or four seconds. Doubling the ball out of the post, aren't they, LSU? Yep. Regardless of who it is. Toppin, free throw line, jumper goes. Jacob Toppin, so we got the son of Shaquille O'Neal and the younger brother of Obi Toppin. Gaines, <laughs> tough shot. Good defense, too, as Askew went straight up. And then Gaines, maybe out of frustration for the miss, commits the foul. 
Big Monday games, ESPN on the app, number 13, Virginia. That's the top team in the ACC. It's been a little weird in the ACC this year. They host Syracuse off a nice win today at 7 Eastern time. And then in the Big 12, Texas Tech, number 12 in the country. They get number 14, West Virginia. That is Big Monday, ESPN and the app. I, I, I am completely sold on Florida State and yep. ACC. You, you saw them today on ABC. I had them on Monday at Louisville. That, that is the best team, the deepest team, the team that's built to get to the final four out of the ACC this year. I think there's only one team out of that league. I think the Seminole are it. And, and sort of any bizarre circumstance, they are the best team in the ACC, and they're not ranked. I mean, they're not even in the top 25 yet. Yeah, and, and, they, and they might be playing as well as anyone in the country not named Gonzaga or Bay. That's true. That's how it's going for Kentucky. They messed up the alley-hoop and ended up having it work. And we'll get a chance for a three-point play. Uh-oh. The pilot has pulled in. He's ready. We are set for takeoff with the jet after this. All right, Jimmy's jet has been improved dramatically. Once we accept that picture, we need to look at the dude handing out the tickets for Jimmy's Jet. It's my guy, Ravi. <laughs> Got you with me. This is how it would be right now. If we put teams on board, Tennessee, Alabama, Missouri, and LSU, you're going to be on that NCAA Jet on standby. You did yourself some good today, though, Arkansas. You did yourself some good on the road at Vanderbilt. Florida, same thing at Georgia, South Carolina. Still got to see a lot more of you. It didn't show well today at all, but I think you're – I, I think the SEC is going to end up with six teams in that NCAA tournament. Those four that are just waiting to tell uh, where, where's my seat assignment going to be. I can tell you what, Alabama, you might be right up there in first class with the best of them the way you're playing. And don't be surprised in that next bracketology from Joe Lenari that Alabama is not a two seed. I can see that Tennessee had been on the two line with Joe's bracketology. He's got two three seeds, Missouri, LSU, Florida, Arkansas. Obviously, the name that's not there is Kentucky, and they certainly don't deserve to be there. But I tell you, Jimmy, a game, or at least a start like this, you, you mentioned, I believe, the schedule. This is about as tough a schedule that Kentucky's going to face their next four or five games. They're statement-type games if you can win them all. Well, that's exactly what Kentucky needs right now. They don't need wins against teams that do them no good, other right. than you just increase what your, your uh, one, one loss record looks like. They need to be good teams, and, and there's six of them coming up starting with LSU tonight, so really good start by Kentucky defensively. That time they give up a baseline drive by Thomas Duke, and he can really score much more than a jump shooter. Big, strong body, similar to Anthony Edwards out of this league last year, about an inch shorter and 10 pounds lighter, but just really sees the game as a school or sees it through his eyes. Schedule for Kentucky. They got this one. They got Alabama. They have Texas. They have Missouri. They have Tennessee. Four ranked teams coming up. Yeah, win those games, get the 500, one game above, and we'll be putting you on that standby list quick. Couple of acrobatic catches, the alley-oop, and that's thrown, and it's flushed by Brooks. Well, Kentucky is so good, even off the middle, the middle part of the floor, finding the lob play out of the dunker spot, or even that time from one third to the far third. Really good, just vision of the pass, the dunk spot. A couple of great catches as Cam Thomas launches a three, another one that misses, and Devin Askew picks up the rebound. Mitz made a great catch. Ware made a great catch on the baseline, which led to the alley-oop. Kentucky guards are rotating down defensively on that glass, Ravi. They're, they're being physical. Kentucky's, any, any time there's been a middle roll guy, they've tagged him hard. This is not a physical Kentucky team, but you have to play physical, even that's not who you are. Mitz stepped right into that beautifully, but he couldn't get it to go. And LSU's looking for points. They'll shoot a lot of threes. Again, Will Wade said we got to make about nine threes if we have a chance to win. They're over five so far today. Easy layup inside. And that's Wilkinson. Will Wade has backed his press off, and now it's a true half court press, trying to keep that ball above the free throw line. But again, once you break it, there's so many openings. Like that, that was one option. There was two other really good options for Kentucky. Half-court defense, man, just not good enough. Not sitting down, not guarding with urgency, not fighting right now. The team out of Baton Rouge. 
Jacob Toppin has six points in five minutes. There's Watford. He goes by his man and flushes it. Not a lot of help on the defensive end for Kentucky. Yeah, and, and, but Rabbi, it's hard to help on that fast of a straight line drive. You cannot take a ball fake from Watford at the three-point line. You, you can, but you can dunk on if you do. Cameron Thomas still yet to get untracked. Two of seven, he drives the lane. Tough floater, that's too strong. And bodies on the ground. Nice play by Toppin, who caught it and dished it to Mince. Watford kicks, another chance. Thomas, that time he finds the bottom of the net. He is always organized, Cameron Thomas. What I mean by that, his feet and his hands are always organized. When the ball gets there, bam, within a half a second, rise and release. 4.50 to go, first half, Kentucky 37, LSU 27. Brandon, you can't let Watford get to his right hand. He's just too good. There's the ball fake, you leave your feet broke, an experienced guy shouldn't make the mistake. He can't help that fast on a straight line drive. And then Cameron Thomas, watch how organized he is. The pass wasn't great, it was at knee level, but because he is organized as a shooter, he can still get off a bad pass and get it off really well. But very well done by 24 in purple. Cameron Thomas, three of nine. Leading the SEC in scoring. Made 29 three-point field goals coming into this. And he has been an outstanding free throw shooter. Should we get down to it? Will Wade now has backed off his full court pressure to that 1-3-1 one, one, kind of half court look. And then it goes into a 2-3 once the ball gets below the free throw line extended. Askew fires another three. I was going to say to you, Jimmy, I can't imagine that Cal was too pleased with the prior Askew three. And he certainly wasn't pleased with that one. Going to his left, taking a guard at three, plenty of time on the shot clock. They're gonna get a push from behind on Wilkinson. We've talked about Big Monday. Let's look ahead to Super Tuesday. Double header on ESPN on the app, seven o'clock Eastern time. Number 18, Alabama will be hosting these Wildcats. Then we head to the ACC, Georgia Tech, at Cameron Indoor, squaring off against Duke. Ravi, think about Alabama. In, uh, I've been on the, the SEC Now studio show the other night. We had their shot chart over the last three ball games. Only 9%, only 9% of Alabama's shots on the year are from the two-point jump shot part of the floor. They take rim shots and they take threes. Let's flip it. What about Kentucky? 40% of all Kentucky shots this year are non-rim shot two-point jumpers. That's the second highest rate out of the Power Five of the Mississippi State. Two different offensive philosophies. Yeah. And uh, Nate Oates, as I said, is 12,000% a believer in how they play the game on that end. A bad turnover for LSU. And interestingly, Calipari has never been a three-point shooting mm. team. And in fact, today said to me on the alley oop, but that won't work, said, look, my guys are missing threes. So I tell them, move in and take a two. Well, he's, he'll be the first to tell you that he's never had a team that he wants to take 33s a game. His, his number in his mind is 16 to 18, somewhere in there, as long as they're good looks. And he's got to like his start right now, but LSU having some success driving the ball, better tighten it up. And Jimmy, keep your shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> got a fight tonight, Coach. I got a fight later on. We will uh, look further into what Seth is requiring or requesting of Jimmy when he said, keep your shirt on at some point when the kids are asleep. We'll get to that. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. You, you, I, I said, how does Cal fix his team this year? And Seth and I talked about it earlier in the week that uh, can Kentucky playing faster might be one of the ways to do it. I like Kentucky when they're pressuring defensively. It makes them play hard. And for Cal, you think, okay, if, am I going to turn my loose and play faster when my turnover rate already is driving me crazy? But so far, Kentucky only four turnovers, and they're playing at a pretty quick pace. Keon Brooks, the high arcing three as the shot clock expired. Kentucky shooting over 55%. 
Well, and they're shooting with confidence. I've not seen a hesitant jump shot so far for Kentucky. And you go back and look at their last four or five ball games, guys have caught it, a clean look, hesitate a little bit, kind of a fake jab step. So far tonight, man, catch it, bam, rise, release, rotation. Looks really, really fast, very confident. Shooting it with a swagger. Sar tried to blow up that handoff and he got called for a foul. So a foul on Olivier Sar. That's his second. Rebbe, you cannot blow up a dribble handoff when you are even or behind your guy. And that's, his, that's the spot that Sar got caught in. I appreciate him trying to make a physical play defensively. Just about a half step behind the action. Who's number three? That's the question right now. I want those guys to talk about it at halftime. And Gonzaga and Baylor one and two, right? And who's number three? Michigan. Yeah, I, 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 to, 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 just watching, my eyes tell me Alabama, Florida State are playing as good as anybody out there. Iowa, Michigan, Villanova, Texas, Houston. Man, love that Houston team. They got real authentic leadership about them when you listen to those guys talk on their Zoom calls. That Alabama team's got authentic leadership. Baylor has it. Yeah, that coach can. Officials check the monitor to make sure that it was Darius Days who was fouled and will go to the free throw line. I agree with you, Jimmy. Yeah, that Florida, but you know, the interesting part about Leonard Hamilton's team, I know Seth and I talked at the half of the game on ABC about culture, and there may not be a more culture based coach who gets his team every year to be the same culture than Florida State's Leonard Hamilton. It's the same every year. Guys that grind it out, athletes. They always have a guy that, that's seven foot six. Every year, they have the same team and they play the same way. It hasn't yet resulted in a championship, but maybe a year like this, because of how odd it's been, maybe they can break through and win a title. I, I, I think they can. I, I think they can absolutely Florida State get to the Final Four. And I, I was talking about authentic leadership because I had that conversation with Leonard Hamilton on Monday in Louisville. Yeah. And so, so what does that look like for a college basketball team today? Let me tell you how. Let me tell you one thing. What does that group text look like amongst those 12 or 13 players? What are they talking about? Is, is it silly, unmature stuff, things that aren't relevant to the game, or is there someone that controls that group text? That's a big deal right now. And MJ Walker, Raekwon Gray, Raekwon Evans, th those dudes understand this is a time in our life right now where we're trying to win a, a, a national title. And they don't, they don't allow that kind of stuff in that culture. That's, I think Baylor has the same thing about it. And here, while Kentucky's leading LSU 44-28, Will Wade talks about his core four the very same way. Watford knocked down his 11-3 of the year. This is a very connected, small group, but that's the group that wins or loses game for them. And to your point, the group text, the late night shoot arounds, all of that is basketball based. If they're off, they're watching basketball, talking yeah. basketball. Ball's been stuck on this side of the floor. I, I just, it's just a bad shot. It's just a bad shot. I don't know, it was eight or nine seconds on the shot clock. The ball had been stuck on that side of the floor for a good 10 or 11 seconds. Well, in the background, oh, I was going to say, you could hear him yelling. So Askew yes. went 0 for 6 against Georgia, and he's 0 for 4, all threes tonight. So he's obviously 0 for his last 10 these two games. And a bucket here would make this feel like a close game all of a sudden. They miss it, but the battle won. And a turnover. Bad pass as Stays got caught underneath the hoop. Boston finger roll, no. No, 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 no more flip shots by Brandon Boston. None. It worked for him in high school. It worked for him in AAU ball. It'll work against guys that are not physical. The flip shot does not work at this level. And it's, you know, one of his issues is he's not drawing anything close to an NBA foul. And there's so much contact in that game that he's not even close to drawing NBA fouls. And that's the right move by Cal. Because at some point, Coach, I understand, doesn't work anymore. Your actions are speaking for you. I got to take you out because we can't have flip shots anymore. Sit down until half, and we'll talk about it in the locker room. 142 to go, a double team, and that ball is turned over. Dante Allen. 
Alley oop, that worked. Kentucky's had three of those. They've all been successful. Rabbi, you know why it worked? Because Dante Allen stayed with what he can do. He can bring the ball up the floor in the open court and make a playoff from two feet. He can't go in and try to twist his body and make hard layups yet. A really good read by Dante Allen. Javante Smart knocks down a three, pulls him within 12. Just quickly, do you think that no flip shots is actually something that Calipari has said to Brandon Boston using that language? I, I think that's exactly how he has said it. Good. And, and, and that's, that, that's the language that you have to say. And, and Brandon knows what it is. That boy, that, that backside lob stuff is so good by Kentucky in this game. They've got it three or four times. Have you ever heard of an NBA scout in a, in a, in a draft conversation say, I, I love this guy's flip shots? No, the answer is no. Kentucky, after Alabama put 100-plus on LSU, almost near the century mark with 36.6 to go. Keon Brooks is having a heck of a first half. He's in double digits and a lot of balance scoring with mid seven, Allen six, Toppin six, Ware and Boston each with five, Olivier Saar with six. They'll bring Toppin back in. Brooks leading all scorers with 13. Carl, I don't know what Kentucky's season low is for a half for turnovers. Only four in the first half. Yeah, much better. I try, I try to throw in one Carl a game. And that's Appreciate a much that. better job. And, and the, the, the pace, the speed they're playing with, they only have four turnovers. Cal's got a lot of good things offensively to talk about with his guys. Fifteen point advantage. Don't let Watford drive right, sit down and guard. Make sure you know where Cam Thomas is. Don't let him throw one in on you before the half. Way back. Three comes up short. It goes into Thomas's hands again. He drives. And if Ware went straight up, perhaps there wouldn't be a foul call, but he brought that left arm down. Or Cam Thomas forced one. And very fortunate that Kentucky didn't come up with that loose ball rebound and go down and put another two points on. How fine a line is it between an undisciplined offense and one that is allowed to play with freedom and shoot a lot of threes? Well, this is the kid at the free throw line, Ravi, is, is an unusual talent that you can get some unusual, unusual rules as a coach. Yeah, but that one was a jab step from about 27 feet with time left on the on the shot clock and, and he'll learn but you're going to play through a couple of those if you're cal right now you try to get a basket and if you get the 51 instead of 49 because you've seen your team going some slumps in the second half and every point is critical for a kentucky team this year thomas takes the last nine seconds yeah, yeah. try to avoid maybe a second foul so here we go as the first half winds down ask you absorbs the contact Mitz three. No, I'll go with the buzzer. Kentucky hangs 49 on them. Shoots really well, about 53%. They made six of 17 threes. And those 49 points, a season high for the Kentucky Wildcats. We'll be back at the second half. And you'll see Jimmy uh, without his shirt on. Sorry, Seth, the halftime report coming up. <laughs> Welcome back to Saturday Showcase. It's presented by Five Hour Energy. Rupp Arena, Lexington, Kentucky, the SEC on ESPN, and a terrific first half by the Wildcats. They score 49 and have a 13-point lead over LSU. As the great sports information director, Eric Lindsay, has pointed out to us, most points in any half this year, most threes and three attempts in any half this season, most assists in any half this season, second biggest halftime lead of the season with all those boxes checked Jimmy what have you seen that have allowed them to get those numbers well the fastest thing on the floor has been the basketball for Kentucky and that's how it should be on the offensive end is the game's not that hard driving when you move the ball and you got multiple guys moving it sharing it finding the third or fourth side of the floor Kentucky has taken 17 threes in the game think about this 
LSU allows more three-point attempts than anyone else in the SEC, and Kentucky is capitalizing on those openings tonight. It's been multiple guys getting good looks. They made a couple of guarded threes, but for the most part, no one in the airspace on the catch, and Kentucky's letting it fly with a lot of swagger and a lot of confidence. Made a long two there by Jacob Toppin, and, and Kentucky's defense, if they stay strong on that end, in particular guarding Watford, guarding the ball, they got a chance to get a good win against a top 40 net team, gain some confidence, heading into that game next week that you have in Tuscaloosa. Neon Brooks, 13, leads the way. Thomas, who you just saw, the top scorer for LSU with 11. See if LSU can go on a little run here to start the second half. Watford's got the ball out of top, but not a lot of movement to help him out. Boy, good job by Mintz to get on top of Cameron Thomas and fight over the top of that pin down. At Will Wade trying to get 24 and purple going early, and Mintz said, not on my watch. All right. First two points of the half to LSU and attend. And a quasi-press. Mintz open three. That's way off. And that's mm. out of bounds off of Saar, not the start. Maybe on Mintz wanted. Yeah, I'm interested to see what the John Calipari's offense is going to go up against to start this second half. Is it going to be that full? Three-quarter court, 2-2-1. Two, two, Is it going to be man press back to 1-3-1? One, one. And it's, it's Will Wade right now defensively trying to figure out his best chance to get back in this ball game. Thomas in the paint floater. That's good. The first four of the second half go to LSU. He, he's good. Cam Thomas is good on the fourth or fifth bounce. Now, he can punch it on you on one and two and get to that rim. But he's also really good and tough and strong now on bounce four, bounce five. Just sit down and guard right now if you're LSU. Just, just guard up, man. Askew, 0 for in the first half, 0 for 4, 6 on the shot clock. Good pass. Good look from Mintz to Saw. Didn't sit down and guard. You got that shot clock under 10. Everybody should be tightened up. She should have some body contact at all five spots. LSU doesn't do it. Kentucky with an easy one around the rim. Watford into the body, and that one is good. Right over Saar, who's dealing with a couple of fouls. Miss. Watford set him up nicely, but he missed the second of the second half. And that's going to be on the floor, and that's Olivier Saar's third foul. Yeah, it's a hard matchup for Saar in, in conversion offense, trying to sit down and guard that basketball coming at him. Maybe Kentucky move that ball at the under, under, under 10 seconds. LSU just loses Saar around the rim, just a total breakdown. And that ball wasn't moving side to side fast enough to get into a rotation to cause that kind of a problem. Saar was limited to seven minutes in the first half. He picks up the foul here, so he's got nine minutes played in the game and goes back to the bench. It's not Isaiah Jackson who comes in. Instead, it's Ware. That can't happen. You, you're a point guard with a shot clock winding down. You're calling for a ball screen, not having a court geography with your mind or with your feet and step on the sidelines. Those kind of plays just, they, they really can kill your momentum. LSU off to a good start in the second half, but a bucket here could really change things. And every time they seemingly get close, they make a mistake. A turnover there, that's their fifth of the game. Yeah, that time Watford goes to his left, and they normally put a shooter. When he when he goes left off that elbow, Rabbi, he's driving it to pitch it to a shooter in the corner because he's got himself into a one-on-one -on -one game, and the shooter that time ran out of the spot. Brooks lane was open, no foul. Some contact, but no foul. Javante Smart, six points in the first half. Drives baseline, good bounce pass. A couple guys get faked up in the air, and Wilkinson lays it in, and just like that, down to a seven-point lead. 
Yeah, who's scoring easier to start the second half? LSU or Kentucky? I'll answer the question. It's been LSU. Boston foul and a basket. Aggressive take from Brandon Boston that time. And no flip shot there, Jimmy. Absolutely. No, no flip shot. Take it with strength. Know the contact's coming. Don't worry about it. Good job of keeping his elbow under the ball when the hit came. One of the few times I've seen Boston this year really go into contact and take the hit and finish off the play. Boston, another one of the five-star recruits for Calipari out of Norcross, Georgia. Are you encouraged by the last game and what we've seen in the first half, plus this from Boston? I, I, I am, absolutely I am. And he's you know, he's still going to make his mistakes, yep. and Cal's on top of it, jerking him out when the flip shot occurs. But this is a young man, Ravi. I want, I want to go back. I think this is important. He, at one point in the preseason, Boston said, I want to be the best player to ever play the game. To ever play the game. That came straight out of B.J. Boston's mouth. So he's got a plan, he's got a goal, he's got a dream, all those things. I will also say this, when you make a statement like that, it does not go away. An opposing team will bring that thing back up and say, let's see what this guy's made out of right now and physically get into his game. And, and he's learning to grow through, I think, some of that stuff. Brendan Watford just made the basket. He'll go to the free throw line. He and Thomas, 13 points each, so they got 26 of the 46. Watford, a 75% free throw shooter, makes it. What's Will Wade going to do with his defense? It's not that 2 2 1. Man to man press, they'll run and jump if they get a chance. Just snake through it and attack. Davion Mintz, tough pass. No. Was that off the hand of Boston? No, deflected out of bounds by Wilkinson. Jacob Toppin had a good first half, six points in seven minutes. Mintz one on one, he'll kick. Brandon Boston saw the paint into contact and it's denied. One on one, the take. Thomas and he lays it in with his left hand. Ended up on the floor, but the contact was long after the bucket. Ravi, see the difference in contact plays by Cameron Thomas compared to contact plays by BJ Boston? Right, that guy right there, he understands it. He is do your chin to the rim type guy. Uh oh. Uh oh, UFC 257 preparations. Jimmy, get ready for the ring. Get ready for the ring. <laughs> Here, here's my biggest concern at this point. I can't get that tattoo off. So if he doesn't win, I'm stuck with a tattoo that maybe won't age real well. Yeah. Well, you're stuck with that tattoo, but everybody that watched that is now stuck with that vision forever. We cannot erase the spaghetti arm dykes coming out of, you know, some closet. And I've spent a year plus working on you and trying to, you know, manage the message and just get you to be a little more technically sound. And we end with you. Well, the reviews are in on the Conor McGregor imitation. Chris, my wife, said hilarious and spot on. Kermit Davis is called, Jimmy. But before we get to that review, how about Cam Thomas? Well, he's wired to score, and he's got a big, strong, physical body. And, and again, he's so organized on his catch into his jump shot or his catch into his drive. And that's why he's on a lot of NBA draft boards, man, a big, strong, 6'4", physical guard that Kentucky better lock in on. This thing's gone from a sizable lead for the Wildcats on their home floor down to five. Uh, what did Coach Davis have to say? Yeah, Kermit, Kermit just called me during the timeout and uh, FaceTime in. I, I, I'm not sure how to explain it, but he was he was impressed actually. I believe well, I he heard him. Said his, no, well, greatest thing I've ever I seen. Said, well, most memorable. So you can take it either way because memorable <laughs> sometimes is not the best. Indelible, but, but right. you can't get it out of your right. you can't get it out of your mind. And I think that's where Kermit is right now in Oxford. Oh, a nice step through, huh? Great step through from Watford. He's putting together a terrific game with 16 points now in just 23 minutes. And it stays a five-point cushion. I cannot wait to watch that fight. McGregor put it on him last time. All indications are McGregor's in the best shape of his life. Nice to see it. 
big three, Brandon Boston. Uh, you can see that he has that dance with the ball ability and bam, explode up into it. Shot hasn't fallen for him so far this year, but it's a little bit of hint, Ravi, of what this kid's capable That's of doing. Right. Two of three from three point land, four of eight overall, 11 points for Boston. Thomas, that's way off, that an easy rebound for a couple of Wildcats. Okay, on Mitch running the point, but ask you on the bench. I just want to say, see if LSU wants to defend to that fifth or sixth pass. See if they'll break down on him. Top in trouble. And he lost the ball right in front of the Cats bench. Yeah, that was a mess. Watford is really good in transition. You forget the kid 6'9 and 240 bringing this ball. He's got the good in and out move. Just went right by that defensive point guard stop of Kentucky. And watch Boston dance with it, dance with it. Cam Thomas backs off about a half a step too many. B.J. Boston makes him pay. Right, right, right. Watford to his right. In the lane, that's too strong. Fights for his own rebound. Thomas, tough shot. That's way off. No foul. You heard Will Wade yell foul. And Kentucky helped by the ball off of the official. That's a legal play. The official on that floor, in the legal part of the floor, and you just play on. You heard Calipari shoot that ball, Dante, and he just missed one. And a run out. Thomas, high arcing baseline, no good. Two teams got cold here in the last minute. Isaiah Jackson and Calipari will bring Askew in and likely take Mintz out. You just, because there's no crowd there, you can hear almost everything he's saying. He was yelling right here. We had Allen set up for a shot right here. Yeah, and if you listen close, you can hear the, the, the defense talking, talking about, you know, he's going right, he's going right, he's going right. And there's a lot, a lot of good stuff to listen to this time in the COVID era. And Askew did not have a good game against Georgia, and Calipari and the rest of the teammates said, that's not why we lost. They were very supportive of the point guard, in spite of his turnovers and over from the floor performance. Very supportive. Two on the shot clock. Boston launches and didn't get it off. Uh, Cal went to his chop play off the out-of-bounds under. O only 20 seconds. LSU defended it well. Just can't get that... 12, 13, 15 point separation that I'm sure he's trying to push for right now. Watford, nope, that's in and out. And a rebound to Jackson. Jackson squaring up in the paint. They got a foul on the floor. And on the undersized Javante Smart, who's 6'4. Jackson, six inches taller at 6'10. What I like about Isaiah Jackson, uh, a lot of things, but think about this kid's blocks per 40 minute rate. Yeah. Isaiah Jackson blocks 6.1 per 40 minutes. That's better than Anthony Davis's rate of 5.8. Nerlens Noel at 5.5. I know he makes some mistakes. Put him on the floor, turn his motor on, and just let him go do what he does. Isaiah Jackson's got 41 blocks this year. That's 25 more than Olivier Saar, who's next best on the team. 25 more blocks than anyone else yeah. on the team. Don't let him go right. Javante Smart, plenty of time on the shot clock and an ill-advised fadeaway three. Taking some hard shots, haven't they? Yeah. LSU in this game. 
Empty trips when this game could be three or four, and that's a foul on Gaines. The country wants us to roll out with Jimmy playing the role of Conor McGregor. But we're not going to do that. It's an eight-point game. Just <laughs> up with 26. UCLA loses. 59-51 here. Thanks, guys. Heartbreaking play at the buzzer there. Kentucky had its heart broken by Georgia in their last game. Played well in the first half. A little sloppier here in the second half. 59-51 with 11 and a half to play. Mitz back on the floor. So the two-point guard operation, which worked really well. But LSU got out of that press that they used in the first half, and it didn't work at all. Oh, a flip shot does go in from Brandon Boston. No, he, he, he kind of had to get the ball way outside with that long reach just to get shot off. But he, he wins the battle up top when he's it's right here. Boom, the battle's won right there. Monte Smart or does, doesn't dig down hard enough to keep the dribble penetration out of the lane. And that's the only way he did get, get that shot off was that long outreach uh, flick of the wrist. The last game in this one, he's, you're starting to see him to come on just a little bit more. Almost half by half. Well, one of the criticisms of Kentucky was they didn't have a guy that could take you off the dribble. And certainly in the last two games, Boston has showed more than just flashes of it. And again, all yeah. the time being spent at that gym, Jimmy. Absolutely. And the key with Boston is to get the ball on the move. If he gets it on the in the stationary spot and then has to attack, he's not near as effective. Not yet, anyway. LSU is not making those nine threes that Will Wade said to me he needed. They are three for 15 right now from three-point land. And trail by 11. And they, LSU, continues to give up a huge number of three-point attempts every game. They give up 30 a game. Kentucky is tracking that number right now. Boston penetrates and kicks to Mintz. He's open in the paint. No good. And the battle of the boards won by Kentucky. Fourth offensive rebound of the game for the Wildcats. They've out-rebounded LSU overall, 27-23. Three seconds for Brooks on the baseline. Tough shot in and out. Oh, Brandon Boston have a game. He's got 16 now. A really good read by Boston. The, just the, the, the middle part of the floor is such a good place to get a rim run from up top. Kentucky went with some Spain action, so it kind of it put him in the top spot to run straight out that backboard, Ravi, for the offensive putback. Good alley-oop, and that one's to LeBlanc, who's now on the floor for LSU. Well, she's going to press again. Double team asking. He dribbles right out of it. Here comes Brooks. The alley oop. That worked well. That size of Jackson. I, I, I just, I, I just continue to think. If you go back and clip this game off, and you clip all of LSU's defensive press possessions, Kentucky's going to be scoring. 1.2, 1.3, 1.4 per possession against that press. At least, I would think at least that. At least. Boston gets tangled up with one underneath. Basket on the baseline, and they ended up falling out of bounds together, so that is something the officials were going to look at. Yeah, Boston trying to fight as a post defender. That, that's a foul on LSU and possibly an F1. Is that, uh, who's that on? Is that Josh LeBlanc? Yeah. You know, I, I, BJ Boston was in, to me, he's in legal guarding position right there. And LeBlanc just comes all over the top of him. And that's, that's they, they, they called a double foul to begin with, I believe. Is that right? That's right. Well, LeBlanc has done uh, nothing oh, so effectively except foul. He's got four of those. Surprised they didn't go to the monitor. Look at that, with that elbow too. getting around that neck area. No. Foul on the floor. Brooks. Games will go shoot two. Big Monday games, ESPN on the app. How about Virginia? They sit atop the ACC doing what Virginia does, and they host Syracuse.
Good game today for Gary Air and the Orange. That's at 7 Eastern time. Buddy Behi back on the floor for Syracuse. And then Big 12, it's number 12, Texas Tech taking on number 14, West Virginia. That's Big Monday, 7 and 9 Eastern time. You know, I've got a good one next Saturday. Florida at West Virginia in that yep. Big 12 SEC Challenge. Florida, good performance today on the road. Florida's playing with so much better pace, and it was interesting. The last game without Scotty Lewis and Colin Castleton, you had Tyree Appleby play a great game. They were back on the floor today, and yet they continued that pace. A whole bunch of inside shots, alley oops, layups. They, they looked like a more together club offensively. Mike White said this whole year he wanted to play quicker. That's the key for a team. That's the key for an individual player. Talked about Boston in the first half. He went and got it done at Georgia. He come back and do it again, and he's answered that. He's answered that challenge. Good hustle from Isaiah Jackson. He followed his own shot. He'll go to the free throw line. It feels like this game has been this way for a long time, where LSU gets within about 10, sometimes eight, seven, and then Kentucky finds another gear. They're back up 11 with a chance to go up 13. Yeah, K K K Kentucky has played really hard. Wrapping the game. They, they played really hard. And, and Jackson always brings the energy. He always has a lot of burst and thrust about him when he's on the floor. And that equates to all those block shots you talked about and what he's doing right there. That's a, Those are some big-time numbers, that block percentage. But just look what he's done compared to the other great big guys in Kentucky in terms of the percentage of blocks and the number of blocks. You don't run plays for this guy. You put him on the floor, wind him up, and let him go. A lot of ink on that graphic. Perhaps we could uh, have the artist in the house tattoo that to your arm or something. <laughs> I'm not opposed to it. Can we sleep on it? Jackson aggressively tries to go to the hole. Instead, it's Askew. He got bumped out of bounds. That's going to be a foul. We call that on Gaines. He picks up his fourth. Right, I talked to, excuse me, buddy. I talked about this in, in my first game today. Uh, and I'm watching you. I was just watching the officials there. It's a good job because the, 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 the floor changed ends really fast. And all three officials, they sprinted to their spots. And coaches have a little more tolerance, a little more patience. When they look up and they see three guys that are working their butts off, they're sweating, they're talking, they're moving, they're closing down on plays, they're not short, short changing the game. Coaches have a little bit more patience with those kind of guys that work. And I was on a Zoom call earlier this week with about 300 officials, and the one thing we talked about, and, man, so so important. Just man, bring the effort, and you'll get rewarded in, in any area of life. What these guys are doing tonight. Was that a Zoom call that you were leading with 300 officials? Were they asking you questions? What was that about? Yeah, yeah, yes, they were asking me questions. A little kind of a kind of a oh, just a, a question format with them. Uh, I'm I'm a big believer in officials. I've been in their officials camp in the summer. I know how hard they work, how much they care about the game. They're always challenging themselves. And within that phone call, you've heard me talk about it. I believe there will be some momentum and some push in this next offseason to go to six fouls in the college game. I think the officials would be for it with all the physicality, the speed, the strength, the restricted arc plays, the verticality plays, the collisions at the rim. It would help them and help you as a coach. If you miss one, you know you're not. I have one more now than I used to have. That momentum will be on the board, I believe, in this next offseason. Joe Lindsay, Vladimir Tadal, and Chuck Jones are officials tonight. At the rim, there was a foul called. We'll take a timeout. 7.59 to go. Kentucky 68, LSU 55. The Wildcats shoot 46%. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball presented by Five Hour Energy Shots. Get it done. Many faces of Kentucky and Calipari, bumpy start to the season, but a good night tonight so far. Five games under 500, three and three in the conference, his 12th season. And the 13 game start is the worst by a Calipari coach team. 
message this week was seven turnovers. Yeah, we got to cut the turnovers down. It's exactly where I was going. We got to cut the turnovers down. We're, we're better, we believe, and he does believe we're better than we've been for sure. I'm not sure he knows or is aware of how good the team can be, but they're they're clearly better than this. Well, they've had some good stretches, and then this is recent turnover problems. That's why you you, you lose those games. And it's so difficult and. So the other thing about Kentucky there, think about this, Ravi. Out of the 10 teams ranked in this week's AP poll, the top 10, 45 of the 50 starters on those teams were on their team last year. So yep. the carryover, the experience, the older teams, that, 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 that's, that's the formula these, these, these days. LSU playing that defense where they're just running at shooters. There's Mintz with a ball fake. Boston wide open, just short. Offensive rebound put back up and in by Ware, who's played a good game with Saar in foul trouble. Ware's got seven. Yeah, and a good rugged rebound and a two-hand rebound by Ware. Ramp on the other end by Ken Thomas. And Watford now, 19 points apiece. Please come to Boston. Jimmy, you know that song, right? Absolutely, I do, and that's what they've done right now. Kentucky has in this game. It started at Georgia, and the confidence has continued. And it's, you know, he's been in a nice rhythm. Uh, LSU hasn't been able to bother his body, which I think you, you have to do on this kid. But he's learned to kind of play through some bumps every now and then. He's had a nose for the ball, not just spotting up shooting shots. Only had a couple of flip shots today. 17 and 16. Watford's got 19. Brooks with 13 for Kentucky, and Mintz is in double figures with 10. The three-point shooting for LSU, it hurt them against Alabama. It's hurting them again tonight. They have taken 16 and made only three. Nineteen of the LSU 23 field goals tonight have been in the paint. That's 83% of their scoring. That's not how they play. No, it's not. Cal comes out of that timeout and goes to three circle. He's got Boston as a three man run off that baseline action. Can choose to go off either side. Mintz, he's got four on the shot clock. He's going to have to shoot it. Fade away. No, and an air ball. They've had a couple of really lousy possessions. One where Askew stepped out of bounds. And then a couple of these late second off balance shots that ended up with air balls and violations. That, that's the that's still the issue that Kentucky has on their roster and it's not fixable this year. A late clock situation where you have to beat your guy one on one without a ball screen. Kentucky just doesn't have it. Watford up to 22 tonight. And it's down to seven. A game that feels like Kentucky's had it under control the entire ball game. You look up, seven point game. Star thinking about one on one. O'Neal bodied him up and he fouled him. It's an interesting Why thought. Why would you reach? Yeah, it's an interesting thought. You, it feels, I mean, Kentucky's had the lead, but while you, you say it feels like they've been in control, to me it's felt like LSU has failed to take advantage of. Like, Kentucky really didn't own this game or hasn't been in total control. LSU's missed so many shots, and every time it gets down to seven, it ends up getting back up to 11. Well, and, and, and I, I tie that to LSU's shot selection. To me, it felt like Kentucky was very much in control the first 20 minutes yeah. and, and maybe extended from there. It's not like they've had real game pressure on them, I guess is the better way to, to say it, Ravi. Right. And uh, you know, LSU now with 6.14 to go, trying to just make Kentucky start thinking a little bit, are, are we going that direction again? Can't think like that. Be tough, play through it. Kentucky with some full court pressure applied. Javante Smart feeds his man. That's good help. It's Boston with a block. And Mintz, Askew's not going to shoot that one. Askew 0 for 4 from 3 tonight, 0 for 4 from the floor overall. 
He'll reset. You have to get a, yeah, you're gonna have to get a ball screen probably involved here. There it is, cross it up, dive out of the ball screen. Boston short. And we'll keep it here. They may get a foul on Darius Days underneath. You know, Cal brought that sprint out ball screen and, and kind of bluffed it and sent Saar up and then quickly back out of it and got Saar back to the front of the rim as an offensive rebounder. Darius That's a big Days, loss. Jimmy is Darius Davis Davis. Davis. He's fouled out. The junior out of Raleigh, Florida, who has been averaging I have a lot more than, than his four points. He's averaged almost 13 a game. Did not have a good game tonight with the four points, four rebounds, and now five fouls. Yeah, and you're missing a rugged guy that, you know, at, at any point can get two or three offensive rebounds in a row on you, can score around the rim, dirty baskets, get fouled. The things that LSU needs right now down 10 with five and a half to go is going to sit on the bench. Olivier Saar has got a dozen points. This should be Watford and Cam Thomas time. Watford missed, battle down low. Watford had a good fight from Saar, and that's it's a good tough play from Olivier Saar, who's been criticized this year for not showing that as often as they'd like to see it. No, back-to-back -back defensive plays by Ravi to meet the ball at the rim. It was Boston on the previous possession. This time it's Saar because it was really good action, man. LSU got the ball in the hands of Watford driving right. He had Cam Thomas spotted up in the ball side corner so he can't help off. Turned it into a one-on-one -on -one play. So the help defense for Kentucky had to be alert, had to be long, had to be tough at the rim. Another one of those trips there, Jimmy. We know we're down 11. We make it two or three, mm -hmm. and it's it's an eight-point game. Mintz, open two, no good. Jackson, great hustle, picks up the offensive board. Now he drives and throws it down, and we're going to have a foul on the floor. It looked like Saar cleared out or was cleared out, and that opened up a lane for Jackson. And you talk about some extension on that dunk, my goodness. <laughs> and he's got some stuff about him. Isaiah Jackson, I think it's a, that, that the clear out call is what it's going to be. Saw right here with, I, I, who's, who's clearing out who? Uh, Wilkinson, <laughs> Wilkinson got into a tackle mode and started moving <laughs> his guy back. Yeah. Those are the plays, though, by Jackson that NBA scouts, they see. And I mentioned the first half, you put every Kentucky player on the baseline and say, I want you to sprint to the far free throw line, three-quarter court. Isaiah Jackson wins that sprint. That's how good of an explosive 6'11 kid he is. I don't know if you saw it, Mr. UFC 257. Olivier Saar needs some work in the corner. He got a little nick on the nose. We drew some blood there. Yeah. Yes, put a little Vaseline on it, play through it. We watched Rocky last night, cut me Mick. Yep. And this is uh, Saar right here. Is that, is that a double foul? I know they're both locked up. Is that a the lock and hold thing from last year? Joe Lindsay taking a good look at it. Well, you had a call with 300 officials. If you were an official, what would you call there? I, I would call a double foul. I, I, I think. Sar. What'd they come up with? The basket counted. I didn't think Sar personally did anything wrong there. At some point, Wilkinson realized, um, I, I got to try to create something here because this is an easy basket. And in fact, they did call it on Wilkinson, so Sar will shoot two free throws. I would agree with that. So they count the they count the basket and Saar gets the free throws. I'm him. Two shots. Don't ask me that. I'm him. So Rad, what that was was an off ball foul by the defense on an offensive shot. So you go to look to see when did the foul occur in relation to when did the shot attempt get out of the hands and four-point play. 
and a 14-point lead. No Darius Days is fouled out. He's one of the cornerstone pieces of this LSU team. Javante Smart doing a lot of dribbling out top. They're going to get a foul on Devin Askew. Kentucky already in the bonus. Askew fouled because he got below Cameron Thomas on that baseline. You're guarding a legitimate shooter off of a pin down action. You have to stay on top of him or beside him. If not, you're chasing him. And you get called for the grab trying to fight through the screen. How'd you like the Rocky movie? That, did that inspire the tattoos? Or, you know, you guys are all in the fighting mood of no, the, the next house? No, the, the tattoos inspired. Now let's go downstairs and watch Rocky. Our, our daughter had never seen that movie before. And she got up this morning, drank a couple of eggs, and went and ran three miles. Perfect. So we're getting some good, some good usage right now out of how we spent our Friday night as a family. Love what you're doing. What was the uh, what was the meal of champions as you watched that movie last night? <laughs> I mean, since we're drinking eggs in the morning, what are, what are we doing that's going to be helping us, you know, with the weight and all that fighting stuff? And the same thing Conor McGregor had the night before a fight. Chick Fil A. <laughs> <laughs> What will Will Wade do with his defense now? We, we talk about it all game. He's got some different pressures that he can come with. He missed a free throw, and now he's got to match up man to man. They missed five free throws, six in fact, 12 of 18. It's a big six points. Yeah, you use that clock. Everything's in Kentucky's favor, yeah. right? Everything's in Kentucky's favor right now. Brandon Boston works himself open. High Archer, good help that time from Trenton. Watford will go the other way. They call it a SAR with a push. Boston blew by his man, Jimmy. Trenton Watford came over to help, and that caused Boston to shoot the ball with a lot more arc on it. Now it leads to free throws for LSU. Well, Boston had a clean three, Ravi, that he turned down, and he drove it into what I would say is a tough two. Those are the shots that a team like Alabama, they just they just stay away from. And Boston would have been better off that time with the lead. If he's not going to take that clean three, reverse it back out top and keep the offense moving, make sure LSU continues to guard. Start of the bench with 13. Free throw good. Josh LeBlanc, another homegrown out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, the junior 6'7", I'm not going to say wasted, but it took them a while to get into their elbow series that time and end up with a short clock because of it. LSU just can't make a shot. No. Four of 18 from three. That pass is deflected, not a bounce. Four of 18 from three-point land. Won't win that way. Well, Wade's going to have to come up with, as he said, at least five or six more threes to get this thing close. Plus.com slash APQ. All right, RD, thank you. Will Wade said John Petty is the key to Alabama. He hit that big three there. Looks like you got to win again. You see the numbers in this game. First half field goals, LSU and Kentucky. Kentucky shooting off a little bit here in the second half. Watford and Thomas have been great. No one else really has. Smart's two for 10 from the floor. Days was two for six. And there is Boston again. He's been the best player on the floor for Kentucky tonight again. And, and Remy, that, that's, that's not a flip shot. That's a drive into the contact. The arms got above his, so he reaches underneath the defender and gets that thing up with a with, with, the, with the wrist. That's that's really well done. Thomas needs it. And the no SEC, good. To me, the SEC Player of the Year right now 
is either Herb Jones or John Petty. Yeah. Herb Jones is every bit in that conversation to match John Petty for what he does to that with that team. Mitch drives, he got hit. Another good aggressive take from a Kentucky player, and it's Minch who will shoot two. Well, there's a good game. I was going to ask you about it. May as well promote it as well. The SEC Network, about 27 minutes from now, number 19, Missouri, taking on number 6, Tennessee. That's 8.30 Eastern time over on the SEC Network. It's also available and streaming on the ESPN app. This should be a very physical game. Tennessee, to your point about Kentucky and others, got to find somebody that can create their own shot. That's their issue. They don't have that blow by guard, kind of like Calipari is having to manage his offense without that weapon. But you know, the first time those two teams met, Missouri was not ready, I don't think, mentally for a big stage, both teams ranked in the top 25 game. They're ready for that now. I'm not saying they're going to go win the game tonight. But Missouri has grown from the first time they played Tennessee. Tennessee got stung at Florida earlier this week. How will they bounce back? But you're right, that will be a grown man's game. And if Jeremiah Tillman from Missouri stays on the floor and doesn't have foul trouble, he could be a double-double, and Missouri could win that thing. Yeah, foul trouble has been an issue. Jackson had a chance, no good. And LSU down 15, two and a half to go. Gaines will shoot it. No good, and boy, has their shooting been awful from three. Four of 20 tonight. Back that up with the performance against Alabama, and LSU is in danger of falling to five and three in conference, 10 and four overall. Cal's just going to continue to move that ball side to side. Might run a set, if not, close it out with a ball screen late in the shot clock. Takes that at block. Brooks picks up the offensive rebound. That's 13 offensive rebounds for Kentucky. Well, so many times LSU's defense has been put in a rotation, and Kentucky has capitalized on it by running right through the rotation to the offensive glass. Watford in and out for a team down 17. There doesn't appear to be a whole heck of a lot of urgency from LSU. Mm -mm. That was a game, that was a this game's over shot, and I'm going to get one up. Boston steps into a three. That's way off. I'm not sure that's the shot that Calipari with a 17 point lead wanted. But Brandon Boston has really been special tonight. Seven of 17 from the floor. Got a couple of threes, six rebounds. You are who your best player is. And it's been that way since the invention of basketball, Ravi. And if your best player is tough, competitive, selfless, vocal, mature, then your team's going to be that way. Uh -huh. and, and Cal has gone all year long trying to figure out, first of all, who is my best guy? And is my best guy leading us down the path I want to lead us? And he's still trying to figure that out. But tonight, very impressed with Kentucky to put 82 or more points on the, on the board and look up, and they only have eight turnovers. One of the highest turnover percentage teams in the country tonight took care of the ball. They're going to get a good win because of it. Shot misses is put back up and in. They're getting That's ready in the water. octagon. Don't forget UFC 257. You can order the main card in English and Spanish. ESPNplus.com slash PPV. We've seen it against Florida, Jimmy. We see a really good performance tonight. How committed are you to buying Kentucky just based off tonight? Well, I, I would put more stock in him than I would before the ball game. And then now it's back-to-back it's, it's -back efforts. Like Boston has produced back-to-back -back efforts as an individual. Can Kentucky take this product tonight on the road into Tuscaloosa? Because you look at their schedule again, they have a chance. Because they need good wins. They don't need to beat bad teams. Yep. They get one tonight. They get a, a win against a team that's going to be in the NCAA tournament. Alabama's going to be there. Next Saturday, Texas comes rolling in. So Kentucky continues to, for me, to be must-watch TV because you just don't know when they're going to flip that switch and if they do. 
look at you. Like you're like a promo machine. You imitate Conor McGregor to promote UFC 257, and you just declare Kentucky must-watch television. Fabulous. You know, even when Kentucky has a 4-9 record, that, that's just who they are. Agreed. Because there's a whole lot of people out there that don't, they, they like watching Kentucky lose. And there's a whole state full that loves Kentucky winning. 82-69, the final score. Brandon Boston, 18 points. He was the star tonight. Keon Brooks, a very good game, 15. We hope to speak with Kentucky fans. That guy right there, Brandon Boston, about his performance tonight, about the work he's put in. Jimmy, as he walks over to put the headsets on, would you change the way that you run your offense? Would you focus a little more, if you're Kentucky, on getting him the ball because of where he seems to be going? Well, I think we saw that tonight. I, I asked in the first half, how does and how does Calipari change this? And what he started to do is get the ball in the hands of Austin on the move. I think that's a big part of his game, especially when he's going with his right hand. I saw a lot of that tonight. I saw Mintz handling that ball a lot as a point guard, playing off the two feet. And Kentucky punked LSU on the glass tonight, Ravi. 46 to 31 advantage. There's a lot of body blows in this game. Kentucky has struggled with those in the past tonight. They delivered the blows like I think my boy Mc, uh, Connor McGregor is going to do as well. All right, we'll get to the Connor McGregor stuff in a minute. Brandon Boston joining us now. Brandon, Carl Ravitch, Jimmy Dykes, congratulations on the game. I know you've worked really hard at trying to get this game to where you want it. Given your last two games, where do, you, where do you think you are, my friend? You know, I, I'm in a good place right now, but I feel like I got a lot more work to do. You know, I'm going to just continue to stay in the gym and stay grounded and stay humble. What's changed? You know, what have you Brandon, noticed what, what, about the yeah, game? What's changed? what's changed for you? Say it again. So what has changed in your approach? Why do you think that this success is coming? You know, I've just been in the gym every day, early mornings, late nights, you know, just building my own confidence, you know, listening to Coach Cal, uh, you know, trusting in my teammates. I feel like we just got to get it together and keep fighting in a uni unison. And then how, how, how do you go about blocking out the noise that's there in Big Blue Nation and only listen to Coach Cal? Tell, tell me how you go about it. Uh, you know, I love this game, and I, I won't let nobody knock me off my pivot because I, I have great confidence in my work ethic, and I feel like as long as I keep working, everything I want is going to come. How difficult has it been, Brandon? Uh, not, not so hard, you know, just, we just had to put our head down for a minute. A lot of people just jumped off the, jumped off the boat, but I feel like if our team is together, that's all that matters. Well, your team's together, and you'll have Jimmy Dykes, who will show you his Conor McGregor imitation later, and Carl Ravitch along with you for the ride. Brandon, congrats, man. Thanks very much for joining us. Appreciate you for having me. You got it.